Hello, everyone. This is David Marquez of the National Wrestling Alliance right here at InYourHeadOnline.com. All that fun stuff, you can catch it right here on this site. From our message board, Wes from Delaware, he wants to know, did you enjoy working with Shawn Michaels for the WWF title, and would you want to work with him again? You know, I've said this time, I've worked with him any night. Of course, there's not many people I wouldn't work with, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's just working with him. Is a, now, he's a, he's a workhorse in a different way. Uh, he works his ass off. He works his ass off, too. Is a, he really works goes out of his way to make you really look as good as anyone can do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's flattering. That's, you know, it takes that pressure off. I don't have to ask for those things. You know, working with a guy like that, you know, you know he's smart enough. He's going to come up with those things. And, Again, let's go back to AWA. He he was educated for this business as probably as, as well as anybody has been, so it it's always going to be good working with someone like that. Yeah, uh, somebody you see in the AWA once in a while on when when they're shown is uh, Bruiser Brody. Did you ever work with him at all? No, I didn't. I never saw him work live. I've seen some matches lately of him, but um, no, I haven't. I never did. Yeah, was, would that be somebody you would have liked to work with? You know, I, honestly, I be no, I wouldn't. Um, there's some, you know, it's some just, people you know, are different. Yeah. Well, it's just you know, watching him work. It's you know, and I'm, I love uh, John Noy. I wouldn't want to work with him either. Right. You know, <laughs> it's just a struggle. It looks like I've never worked with either one of them, so I can't say it wouldn't be. But man, it just looks like a struggle. Yeah, the, uh, I'd work with him. Yeah, not too long ago in AWA, they actually had a match. It was uh, Vader versus Brody, but it was before Vader was was uh, Vader. So Baby was, Bull. Yeah, so it was uh, it was pretty cool just to see that, just for like uh, history's sake. Well, now, I've seen some of them. I haven't seen that match. I saw one of the night with, uh, with that I thought was spent, you know, really great match. Of some be- one of the best matches I've seen on like AW thing was it was John Norton, of all people, Colonel De Beers, with a <laughs> one arm tie behind their back, back match. Right. Man, that was one of the best matches i ever seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, right after this, for, for, I've seen just what happened. Was, but it had all those takes, and we saw like three or four of them for the build up for that thing. And, man, it was a damn good deal. I just. Uh, of course, in those days, they didn't put it together to, you know, to just you just went out to do it together like a, you know, spray painting, just do ink against the wall, against the canvas, and hope it stuck. But mm-hmm. well, that thing stuck, man. I watched it; it was good. Uh, area code three one zero. Hi, that's me. Yep. You have a name? Hi, this is Joyce calling from California. Hi, Hi Sid. Joyce, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. Hey, thank you for giving us a shout out earlier. That really made You're my welcome. day. You're welcome. Another psycho <laughs> fanatic. Uh, yeah, psycho what, fanatic. Woohoo! <laughs> what you got going on tonight, George? Um, nothing much. Just spending time with my daughters. Good. And so I don't know if Eric told you, but but I had a baby and I named her after you. Uh, she just told me that earlier. <laughs> uh, George, I'm flattered by that. I really am. Uh, uh, I'm so I'm just speechless over that. But it's something nice to know. Uh, I've had my niece, who recently named her daughter, after me too, Sydney, and I uh-huh. just love that. I really appreciate that, Joyce. Any questions you have tonight? Well, it's a nice name. Well, I got a question. Um, I know that you're into working out a lot, and you're obviously a hunting fan, but when uh-huh. you're not doing that, do you have any hobbies or any other businesses that you do? Like, how do you spend your time when you're not out hunting or working out? You know, Joyce, I think there's, sometimes we get... Uh, this hunting deal, you got to realize that's the first time I've been hunting uh, since a, probably a year, once since my leg was broken. Uh, and the uh-huh. time I went hunting before that was up with a uh, deal that did with WCW, the Buckmasters, which is a big deal. I don't really do a lot of hunting. I, I did when I was younger, but over the last few years, I don't even take a day off out of the gym to, uh, um, and I just, this is going to sound really um, silly, but. You know, like last summer, and I'm a big, I have a big garden. I know it sounds weird, but I love gardening. Wow. I, like, I love stuff like that, and I didn't have one last year because I didn't want to take any time off to do anything other than do what I'm doing. And I've got a mission right now, and that mission is, is right. stepping forward. And, and I'm going to have one this year, but then it's not going to be one that's going to wear me out. Wow, that's but great. But I don't do a do lot of that. Still... I'm sorry. <laughs> You still spend like um, four, or five hours every day at the gym, and you still run. Yeah, I do. Matter of fact, I, I, I got a real crazy regimen, and people see me. They, these guys see me in the gym. They're like, "Man, I live there." I go in the morning, two or three hours. I go back in the afternoon for two or three hours, and the guy was saying another day, "Cause man, once you just get it hot and stay over here in between workouts." <laughs> but uh, no, it's, uh, I've got this workout thing down to a science, man. I really think that's why. 
that I'm able to go as fast as I'm able to go and can, uh, be, do the things I'm doing as a big person at this you new know, stage in my life. Yeah, no wonder you're in such great shape. Right. Any, do, you, do you have any special diet that you do? I do. What do you think? It's not a special diet. My diet's, you know, I've just adjusted my diet to all the different diets that are around right now. And, you know, it goes back way before Atkins did it. You know, the um, United States Olympic team did this high-protein diet a long time ago to compensate, you know, the influence steroid use from uh, German and European and, and Japanese oh. and people like that were doing them. Uh, and it's, it's really called a long time ago the caveman diet. I do a high protein Cave diet, that. <laughs> right? But I, I just I eat more fruits and vegetables than probably, you know, a tribe of monkeys. Uh, I, <laughs> but I believe in that. I, of course, I, I eat as many, you know, carbohydrates, but they're all good, you know, quality carbohydrates like, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, fruits and vegetables and and sweet potatoes and you know, tons of things like that. But I compensate my calories, my carbohydrates for all my cardio and all the running I do. You know, right now okay. track season is starting. I do a lot of bleacher running. You know, I could run 60 bleachers in a row, you know, a solid hour. So, to me, running, is, and it's, I just really started running 100% last summer, and I really can feel that I can bust out 100 and just, you know, run, run into my own sweat. Wow. So, so it's, it's right now, it's, and I, run, I like running as much as I do weightlifting. And that's probably why I'm not as, you know, I'd probably be 360 pounds if I didn't run, you know. Mm-hmm. Joyce that has a lot of stuff awesome. going around in the back. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Joyce has a lot of stuff going around uh, in the back. I know it. I know. All right, Joyce. <laughs> I got like the whole house here. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Sid. Thank you, Thanks girl. For in. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, do you got a question there, uh, Barb? Definitely. I was just wondering if you have any specific memories of the angle on Raw, where you beat up Sean. Now, you were supposed to be a heel, but the entire crowd was cheering for you. Right. You know, that, you know, um, the, what was your question again? I'm sorry. It was about the, uh, the angle that, on Raw. You should have any memories Shawn. about that? Yeah, basically. Well, the memory I do have about that is this. That right there, what it, that should, the memory about that is this, is that the, there was, um, they were, trying to force the people to buy something they didn't want to buy. Mm-hmm. You know, now, you push me as a heel and let me work with people like Sean and, and um, you know, everybody else that I worked with at, at that era. But you look at the deal at SummerSlam, you know, here it is. I, I'm, I'm a, I got to be a dickhead for hitting a Mexican in the head with a camera and then, um, you know, beating up a little guy like Sean. But yet they cheered me the whole way because that's the Northeast. And that's where I really got a strong baby face, you know, following. So, um, other memories that is that yeah I had a good time there but you know they were trying to force something trying to get shine on them over at my expense and it just wasn't going to work no matter how hard I tried so that's the thing I remember about that mm-hmm. now you basically were pretty much the same character like if you were a heel or a face but what were like some little differences you would use in your character like you know if you were being the, well, the face or you were being the well heel. if I was being a baby face the things you probably noticed more in WCW and this is something I you know, I was asked to do, and I try to do things that were asking me, is that, uh, you know, they said, we really want you to get there and fire up the people. So I'd be a little more interactive with the people. Um, and that's probably the only difference. You know, other than that, I started working a little more, you know, I call it silly. Um, but uh, other than that, that's about the only, and that was, I did try to lean that way a little bit to, you know, uh, the book at the time were Ed Farrell and Fitz Russo, and I've been asked by Bill Bush, the head guy for WCW and Turner, to try to do what these guys wanted, you know, that's what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of those guys, um, Vince and uh, Vince Russo and uh, Ed Ferraro? I like Vince Fro- Russo and I like Ed Ferraro, but I think they're, um, I think what they did speaks for itself. You know, yeah. I don't have to knock these guys to tell you guys what they ruined. Um, and those, you know, this is how bad, you know, this thing is, guys, and I, maybe how bad it was isn't the right word, but when these guys, you know, really everybody that was there thought that this deal was, uh, um, espionage, you know, that he was being sent by Vince to kill his territory. Right. Right. Now, if you're not, and we know now that that wasn't true, that he was at least sent there unless, you know, to keep this thing looking real, uh, of course, really, I don't see, they're having a reason to make it look real. You know, so it's um, that's the thing. It's that's how bad they were. You know, that they, people really thought that they were in there infiltrating WCW to run a place for business. Uh, yeah, I don't think that was the case. I just think they didn't know when, as much as they were people 
they led people on that they thought they knew. Mm-hmm. That simple. 